York is just a nigga from Toronto, you know what I'm saying, that, that's trying to make it in the music industry, you feel me? And he's trying to do something more productive and more positive with his life. Okay, so I feel like with any person, there comes growth, you feel me? And I feel like as you're growing, depending on what you're trying to do, you may want people to address you a certain way or by a certain name that you feel is more suitable for the circumstances that you're in now, you feel me? And I feel like with my background or like some of the controversy that goes around me as an artist, I felt like it would be more, sorry, it would be easier. It would be easier to digest me as a person if my name was a little bit more suitable. I felt like killer was a little harsh coming in, you know what I'm saying? It's killer, killer crook in the castle. Full fifth blow, fuck the fight in the hassle. No. And like, I don't know, I feel like, you know, if you know, you know. Like, you know, like, if people, for, for people who are really part of the fan base and who know me, like, I think they know why, you know, the growth happened and why, you know, I decided to go with the moniker, the crook, because even that people that knew me, like, one of my first, like, viral tracks was, like, called The Crook in the Castle, you know? And that was when I was going by my old name, Killer. You know, and the track was like, Killer, the crook in the castle. You know what I'm saying? Four, fifth, blow, fuck the fight in the hassle. So I feel like my fan base, if they know, they know. You know what I'm saying? Like, and for the people that don't, I grew. So I felt like my, I wanted to be more marketable and be more, you know, of a more mainstream, more industry digestible artist than to be such a street presence, you feel me? Well, my pops is Guyanese, but he's like black Guyanese because for people who know, there's like two types of Guyanese. You have more West Indian type guy. Well, there, well there, it's a West Indian, you know, place, but like you have some that are more of like Indian descent. They have like longer, straighter hair, you know, and they're more of like, they would call them coolie, you know? And then you have some that look just like a regular black person, almost like a Jamaican, they would say, or like a, like a you know, like, just the average like black person, you know? So yeah, my dad's Guyanese. His grandma was like Guyanese mixed with Venezuelan. And my mom is Italian and she has native in it. My ethnicity, my ethnicity, sorry, is like um, Guyanese and Italian. For me, my two major bloodlines. First time I remember myself rapping, like just rapping, maybe I was like five or six years old, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just rapping, like, just maybe rapping a song that I heard or just saying some random shit, like, yo, mom, give me some egos or some shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but like, as I got older, like, I always had a love for music, you feel me? Like, I always was like, listening to the new artists, burning CDs for my parents when they didn't even know how to do that shit. You know, I was always in tune to the music, so that was like a love, a passion of mine. You know, going to school, I'm trying to fit my CD player in my pocket and shit, like, you know what I'm saying? So like, I don't know, by the time I was 14, I just felt like, yeah, I wanted to rap. I was listening to instrumentals, I was listening to shit. So yeah, 15, 14, 15, I went to a studio, studio, or like at least a house studio, and started recording. Like on a, I'll be honest with you, I listen to everything. Like everything that I come across music-wise, because I love music, I listen to it, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's good, I may listen to it again. It may stick, you know what I'm saying? But I try to listen, I try to keep my 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 mindset open when it comes to music, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to limit myself to like one type of music, so, you know what I'm saying? I listen to everything, to be honest with you. I listen to all the young kids that are making music. If they're on the platforms that are posting them, you know, like Keeps It Solid, like Six Buzz, and these platforms, if, if, they're, if, they're, if their videos come up, I watch them. But like, on a regular basis out of Toronto, maybe, I'll probably bump some Benji. You know, I'll probably bump some Casper here and there, you know? One, two of his songs get me turned up a little bit. You know, probably bump some, like, some Pangs. Out of the city, those are probably, like, three rappers that I really bump. And then, like, on a bigger, on a bigger status, like, worldwide, I bump a lot of, like, Herbo, Fredo, Bump ESTG a lot, I like his shit. Some K Flock, some D thing, whatever, you know? I know they're probably, they have their little thing, or whatever. Yeah, like, really anything that's hot, you know? My playlist.
this. Yeah, ESTG. He's getting bumped. You know what I'm saying? Who else? Who else is on the playlist right now that just got Cosme right now? I like that emo rock star track by um by NBA Youngboy. My heart shackle down, kill me if they can take my head off. Mama, I got millions, I go back. I like that shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why. I wasn't a big fan of NBA Young Boy at first, but but I like him now. You know who else I fuck with? I like Hot Boy. Hot Boy is nice. He has his little cadences and his little melodies, you know? Couple guys. Couple guys. I don't know. Kodak Black too. Kodak Black's always a vibe, you know? I can't say what I have, because then it won't be a surprise anymore. You know what I'm saying? With a collab that probably would surprise them if I did it. If I was to turn around and do a song with Drake now, that would fucking surprise everybody, wouldn't it? Everybody would be surprised. But like, Tor Toronto wise, street wise, I'd probably say Boulevard Biz. If me and Boulevard Biz drop a track, I'd probably it'd shake up the place a little bit, you know what I'm saying? That's who, probably, I would say. I don't, <laughs> I don't deal with them. I don't do nothing to them. They just do what they do and they do that. You know what I'm saying? If I was to run into them in real life, that would be a different story what I'd ever do. <coughs> but the thing is, this is the way I look at it, right? It's like, people have eyes for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So, anybody can get on the internet out a fake account, you know what I'm saying? And go under somebody's page and talk a whole bunch of shit about them. You know what I'm saying? But who's really like being themselves? Like who's comfortable in their own skin? You feel me? Cause now, now people are going off the word of people that are not even comfortable to show their face. You know what I'm saying? So like, how do I engage with that realistically? You know what I'm saying? I don't even, I, I don't even wear a mask. You know? Like I'm such a straightforward person. Like I don't even know how to even understand that type of person's way of thinking, how they rationalize things. So I don't even engage with them. You feel me? So yeah, like when it comes to the fake accounts and shit and the net banging, I wish those guys the best because they got real problems because they need to love themselves. You feel me? It's crazy. Last night I was on live at like three, four o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? And I got a bunch of fans on there. Then I got a bunch of fake accounts on there. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, holy shit. I, I, I realized at one point, I'm like, yo, it's four o'clock in the morning. You were on a fake account on my live, you know? You are the biggest fan out of everybody in here. You know what I'm saying? You just don't know how to, you know, deal with how you feel, right? So like, the people who are net banging and shit, majority of those people are people that have to take that up with themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, those are people who have problems within themselves. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to them though, right? They keep my page buzzing and shit. So, you know? That shit doesn't really affect me, fam. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when you don't really know yourself or like, you're insecure about certain things or like, you're not who you're claiming to be or you, you don't feel comfortable in your own skin, then that type of shit will bother you. You know what I'm saying? When you pay your bills, take care of your people, them, and you're the man off the camera as well. You get what I'm saying? None of this shit matters. You get what I'm saying? Like, a lot of these guys get off the camera, take off their jewelry, take off their clothes, and give them to next people, and you know what I'm saying? Like, so like, that net banging shit is gonna bother them. That shit doesn't bother me. Like, I know myself, you know? I'm proud of who I am. Nobody can't tell me anything about myself. You know? Okay, when I make a Mount Rushmore, I'm not making it off of numbers. And I'm not making it off of popularity. I'm making it off of what artists I favor the most. Like which artists I relate to. Which artists put me in a good mood, motivate me, you know what I'm saying? And up there, I'm gonna throw up there. I have to throw Pac up there. Cause Pac is just, he's just the gangster in the back of your mind that just tells you don't take no talk, you know what I'm saying? Boom. Throw Pac up there, you know what I'm saying? Cameron, you know what I'm saying? Cameron had his wave when I was growing up. He had a whole different thing, you feel me? 50 has to go up there, you know what I'm saying? 50's the guy, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm gonna put? DMX. DMX was a different level of artist, dog. Even though he was a custody, see him? RIP to DMX, like he had his addictions and shit. He was a different level of artist, dog. You feel me? Like. I go back and watch his movies to this day. Like, you feel me? Belly, you know what I'm saying? Certain movies, his songs, his music, like, that guy was just a different artist, you know? Like, you know, he's just super talented, like, you know what I'm saying? 
So yeah, it would be DMX, Pac, Cam, and 50. Going on. It's, it's, it's a good platform for mans to do their thing, right? But it's also another way for bullshit to start again, right? So it just depends how the platform is monitored and how it's used and what kind of energy is being pushed on that platform, you know? Is it is it another academics? Is it another place for everybody to go and scream at each other and da-da-da-da-da? And put everything that's supposed to be in the streets on the internet? Or is it somewhere people are coming to network and show the fans more about themselves, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm with all of that, you know what I'm saying? I'm with networking with the fans, you know what I'm saying? Connecting with the fans, opening up to the fans, letting them, you know, relate to me more and see different aspects of my personality. But what I'm not with is putting the street shit out on the internet in front of a whole bunch of people who are not involved for them to know whatever they think they, I'm not into that, you feel me? So. It depends what what kind of what kind of narrative is being pushed with that, with the keep six solid, with the with the with the clubhouse. I'm more like you know music on the internet, streets in real life, you know. There's a couple things. First off, they need unity. Niggas need to kill this thing like it's cool to not show love to niggas, you know, because. Like, I don't know, it's like a very competitive city. I always see this, like for Toronto, it being such a small, like small, like it's a big population in Canada, but like on a global scale, like for a major city, our population is a lot smaller than the New Yorks and the LA's and like, you know what I'm saying? And the Atlanta's and you know, but the, the gang culture and the hate is, is just like a big city, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, niggas have to kill that negative narrative where it's just like, yo, Fuck everybody else. Like, you know what I'm saying? If niggas were to actually support each other and actually everybody has a buzz and everybody's pushing each other. If, every, if, if niggas got ops and niggas got beef, okay, whatever. You guys don't have to. But like, you see how the city's divided and shit? That's gonna stop people from going past that level. You get what I'm saying? Combining everybody's fan bases. You know, look at Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? You got Gucci, you got QC, you got Migos, you got Baby, you got so much people down there. You know what I'm saying? They're all doing collabs with whoever they're doing collabs with. They're controlling the, the narrative of the industry, you know? In Toronto, we can't do that shit. You know what I'm saying? And another thing that people have to do, right, is they have to invest in their music. A lot of people don't want to invest in their music. A lot of people don't want to invest in themselves as an artist, you feel me? They try to go the cheapest route or the quickest route or, you know? You have to invest. If you're not gonna invest in yourself as an artist, why would anybody else invest in you? You feel me? So, yeah, that's the way I look at it. People need to, there needs to be a little bit more unity in the city if there's no real politics there. And people just need to invest in, in themselves. And if you have a homie around you that's rapping and, and, and your homies are getting money, you guys invest in him, help him with his craft. Because if he blows, everybody's gonna expect them that person to deal with them anyways. You get what I'm saying? So you guys pitch. Invest, help the artist in your area or the person that's trying to do something productive in your area. Do something, you feel me? One, as people that hold the, the, the entertainment in the city, like remember, when people open their phones, who do they see? They see Keep Six Solid, they see Six Buzz, they see Toronto rappers, they see, you know, whatever pops up. So. You guys have to control the narrative. What are you guys pushing? Are you guys pushing music? Are you guys pushing politics? Are you guys pushing for guys to beef? Yeah, it may be good, it may turn up the page, but what is it doing to the city? What is it doing to the to the culture? You get what I'm saying? Are we in this for the quick cash out? Are we in this for the long haul? You know what I'm saying? Every cause has an effect. Every action has a reaction, you feel me? So it's like when platforms are pushing, like I said, rap beef and musical beef and artists, whatever, negative shit, right? then it's also gonna go against what we're trying to do in the long run by getting us to the next level. You get what I'm saying? When it comes to music and opportunity, because this music has opened opportunity for a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? That there was no opportunity before. So, I don't know. It's it's really like, that's what it is. You know, if, 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 the, if people wanna help and make this better, it's about what are we pushing? Are we pushing positivity? Or are we pushing negative, negativity? Yeah, the negative stuff might get more reaction and it might get more followers and this and that, but 
We get more bodies. We get more raids. We get more kids shot, innocent kids. We get more, you know what I'm saying? So it all plays a role in everything, you know? Because it's the same people playing a role in it that complain when kids are getting shot or women are getting shot or, you know what I'm saying? And things are happening or the area is dangerous, but then they're reposting the newest diss song. Or they're, you know what I'm saying? So it all comes hand in hand, right? And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a saint. I'm not saying I'm innocent. I'm not saying, you know what I'm saying? I don't make music that tends to the culture, but like, fuck, I wouldn't make it if they didn't want to bump it, right? Like, you know, it all goes hand in hand what's going on, right? So, I don't know. But it just takes us all as a whole for us to just start pushing a better positive narrative, you know? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Maybe not all of them. Maybe not all of them. But majority of them, yes, you can. I feel so. I feel so. You get a, a nigga get a, a nigga sitting on the block right now, get a call from Drake and say, yo, listen, come pull up at the studio by yourself. If you come with anybody, you're uh, boom. Nigga's gonna go. Nigga gets there, boom, boom, boom. Nigga, like, I, I, feel, I feel like he has the power to squash certain polys. Or at least put it so that, so that, you know? But that, that, that's not his job, right? That's not, like, I can't, you can't put that on somebody, you know what I'm saying? You can't put that on somebody to like, pick up, be a superhero, right? But if we're speaking honestly, if somebody has the power to do that as an artist, yes, because I feel like a lot of this shit comes from lack of opportunity, you feel me? And I feel like Drake could give a lot of opp opportunity to people, especially artists, you know? So my answer to the question is that, yeah, for that one. Man, my family, you know, my niggas, like all my, all the people that support me, you know what I'm saying? Cause like at the beginning it was like, oh yeah, like I want to do this. But like when you get to a certain point and you see all these people are almost depending on you to make it now. You know, it's like, they're like, you know, like now you feel like it's not even only for you no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like now I got to make sure I get through to make sure my people are straight. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you have people around you that, you know, they only know one thing or, you know, you want to make sure that hopefully that person gets a happy ending at the end. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm trying to make it out for my people and they motivate me, you know, my family, my people, my fans people that support me and tell me to keep going. And the haters too, they motivate me, cause fuck, they let me know that I'm doing something right. You know what I'm saying? Cause the people who don't like me are mad, as they should be, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, motivate, they motivate me, my family motivates me, all my people them that support me, my fans, that's my motivation. Cause it's bullshit. Cause it's bare fuckery in there. There's a lot of politics. There's a lot of shit talking. There's a lot of, you know, they like that stuff. And I'll be honest with you, the beat is hard as hell. You know, the beat is crazy. It has a crazy sample in it. You know, it's catchy as hell, you know? No niggas, we aim for the roof. Try and turn that boy top to a coupe. Try and turn that boy top to a drop. We get the location, we making it hot. So if it's not for the bullshit, then it's for the for the sound, you know? People like the sound, you know? It's an upbeat energy song, like it's a happy, like it, it gives you a happy vibe, like it gives you a dance, you know? It gives you a nice little bop, you know? So it's like, yeah, you know? It trended for like two weeks straight. I was like, oh shit. That was my first time ever trending on YouTube, you know? But it won't be the last, for sure. You know what I'm saying? We got some, I got another joint like that coming just now, you feel me? Like as a wife, I look for like, one of the big things is with me, like obviously she has to, she has to be, she has to be bad. Like she has to look the part for me. But like, I always say this, like you don't know somebody for real until you go through something that's very inconvenient or very, it, it, it makes a person upset, you know? or it takes it to that level, cause then you'll really see what that person's true character is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Are they gonna, are they gonna cheat on you? Are they gonna leave you? You know what I'm saying? Are they gonna go for the next best thing or what's convenient at the time, you know? So I really, loyalty is a big thing for me. You know what I'm saying? Female has to be loyal. That has to be number one first. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like I can't ever think that my wife is gonna do, you know what I'm saying? So like when it comes to loyalty, 
comes the most, nothing else realistically, like I'm a provider, you know, I'm a hustler, you know, I don't depend on nothing else. So as long as my lady's keeping the house at home, you know what I'm saying? She's loyal to me, she's smart, she's, you know, pretty. She's down for me, that's, that's all I need, you know what I'm saying? That's all I need in a female, you know what I'm saying? Who I sign? Going off of buzz and like numbers and shit, cause that's how we're gonna do this, cause we're talking about business. We're talking about money. We're not talking about person personal shit. We're not talking about opinion. This is my label, I need to eat, right? So, biggest buzz, I'm gonna go with Benji and, and top five. Cause they just, they have the biggest buzz right now. You know what I'm saying? Between them two, right? Five was on the road, three, five, boom. Casper, you said four, right? Four. Five, Benji, Casper, and me, and myself, you mean? That's it, so that's four. West End. You're here with the crook. Thanks for checking out my Solid 16 interview. You know what I'm saying? Tap into the Instagram if you want to hear new music, the crook underscore. Yeah, you guys already know how we rock, gang shit.